Today we're going to experiment with audio sound effects using the newer Arduino Due board, which we have configured to create a reverb. 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 So what you see here is the Due board and there is a microphone plugged into it over here and it is interfaced into the A to D circuitry through these resistors and this AC coupling capacitor. Reason for that is best shown on the schematic. Hopefully that comes in, it might be a little out of focus, but uh, there's a schematic there and we're dividing the 3.3 volts down to about 1.65 volts here and AC coupling the microphone in on top of that and then that output is fed to the A0 input the, uh, digital, the analog to digital converter on the Arduino. Uh, the reason for this 10K is just to try to be safe because you have to be very careful with these uh, boards especially the Due. It runs on 3.3 volts and there's all kinds of warnings about uh, being careful not to blow its pins, and so that's the reason for this 10K. What you're seeing here is a uh, very um, abstract picture of sort of a reverb situation. Uh, the box is meant to be a room. Uh, down here at the bottom there's a speaker, and then here's the person listening, and the sound goes directly from the speaker to that person, but it also bounces off the walls and comes in at slightly delayed times. And if it hits the back wall and enough of it is reflected, then the person will hear that at a slightly different time, too. For small rooms, you don't really notice the effect, usually, but for very large rooms, you may detect sort of a cathedral sound or, uh, generally speaking, a reverberation, a reverb. The way we're going to do that is to use the microphone as our input signal. Here is the quarter-inch plug for at the end of the microphone and it's coming in to that biasing network that we talked about earlier. The output, I didn't point it out, it's taken from here and again there's a series resistor just to be nice to the due and not uh, try to avoid any danger of shorting things to it. You gotta be very careful not to short pins together. Uh, there's also an AC coupling cap that's to be nice to this which runs over eventually to the back of this uh, stereo so it's just a Sony amplifier. Coming back to the code, here's the code which we will walk through very soon. But before we do that, let's talk about the main data structure that is in this code and how we write to it and read from it and how we create that reverb. So to explain the purpose of the data structure, we look at the diagram on the right and this is representing an array it currently has a size of 8,000. There's plenty of memory, uh, plenty of RAM in the DUA, and so we use 8,000 ints, which is actually 16,000 uh, bytes, and it has much more than that. We're able to run it up to about uh, 20,000 ints, which is 40,000 bytes. should be higher, but I think the uh, integrated development environment is taking some of the space. Anyway, this one is 8,000 long, 8,000 integers, and what we do initially in the code, as you'll see, is zero out all of those 8,000. So there's a loop and setup that basically zeroes those out. Once the data structure is initialized with zeros, what we will be doing is writing the analog to digital converter numbers into it and filling it up. And then we will be reading out delayed versions of those. So in this example, um, the program has been running for a little bit of time and there's a current tap right here that will write the current value from the A to D converter into that location. Then what we'll do is we'll subtract off a certain amount from that to pull out an older value which we will then add to the current value you'll see in the code and put that out to the D to A converter. Now this works fine provided the delay T1 is less than the current tap value. 
but if T1 is bigger than the current tap value, in general we may want the delay to be virtually the size of the buffer so that we can get the largest time delay possible. If we were to subtract something that large from the current tap value, then what would happen? It would go down here below zero and we would index a bad array value. So we, in the code, will look for cases where the current tap minus the delay time or the delay indices um, amount goes below zero. If it does go below zero, then we will add the array size to it and that will move it back up here. Now, as the code runs, it will write values into these locations and then when it gets up here, it will reset and go back to zero and count up and go on up and put values in, put values in, and then reset to zero. So it will be using this as what's called a ring buffer. So this is the code for our reverb function. As you can see, the comments explain that the inputs, it reads from an analog input pin A0. It writes to the DAC output pin DAC0. Moving on down here, this is the uh, buffer size definition of 8000, and it's uh, called a ring buffer, and it's uh, an array of ints. Down here are our delay times. T2 is the longest delay, so it's B size minus 1. T1 is a little bit shorter. It's B size minus B size over 5. So that gives us a two-tap reverb that we hope will sound reasonably decent. Here's the setup function. As mentioned, we zero the buffer, the ring buffer. So there's a for loop here to do that. Then, of course, we have to uh, set up some things for the A to D converter. I think this one's not needed, as the comment says, but we wrote that anyway. Um, one thing about the Arduino Due, it has a 12-bit ADC as opposed to the 10-bit in the Uno. And so we change it from 10 to 12 with this explicit call. Also, the write resolution defaults to, I forget, 8 or 10 bits. I guess it says 8. And so we set that to 12 bits so that we can get the full range on it. And then here is our console uh, that we open so that we can um, write to the screen if we want to do that as well. Here is the main function in Arduino land. They don't call it main. They give you a function called loop, as you well know, and that's where you put your primary code. So there are several variables here. Analog in is where we'll store the value from the A to D converter. Old value 1 and old value 2 will be temps that we'll just use to uh, record the values at the tap points that we have chosen. Analog out is a temp that we'll use for assembling the analog output value that we'll write to the DAC. Current tap is from the diagram I showed you. Um, tap is a temp used to index into some of the old values. And the loop counter will be used to judge the speed of sampling. So first thing we do, we go into a while loop. Why to do that? Well, this is a loop, but we don't know how long it spends at the end of this loop. So we have an explicit while loop so that we can run as fast as possible. We read it says 10-bit value. Uh, it's actually a 12-bit value because of the change that we made up there. And then we convert it to, bi to um, bipolar. So we subtract off 2048, which is half of 4096, which is the largest value that the A to D can return. So the center value should be at 2048. Now we've scrolled up a little bit. Here's the last line we talked about where we subtract off 2048, so that basically makes the center equal to zero. Uh, any values less than 2048 will be negative numbers, and any values greater than 2048, 2048 will be positive numbers. So we want um, bipolar numbers in our algorithm, just like a audio waveform has plus and minus values in the uh, audio voltage waveform. Here's a delay. Remember uh, we said that the Arduino Due seems to be able to sample 100 kilosamples per second or maybe a little above, so we delay by 20 micro. Here's where the main action happens of getting the delayed values. We use the current tap. We subtract T1 as shown in the diagram, giving us a new tap location in the buffer. 
Um, we check to see if it's gone below zero. If it has, we add the B size to it as previously explained. And then we pull the value out of the ring buffer and store it in a temp called old value one. What happens is the old value one and old value two that we pulled out of the ring buffer are going to be scaled. Um, one will be decreased in size by a factor of three, so we divide its current value by three and restore it in that variable, and the other one we divide by four. Uh, this is the longer path, and so we, delay it, we divide it by a slightly larger number so that it's a weaker sound that we will be using from that longer path delay. So we scrolled up a little bit more. Here's where we were. And here now is where those values are added to the current sample. So we're taking the current audio sample and we're adding delayed and s smaller size values of the audio waveform at tap one and tap two. We add those together and that becomes the analog output waveform. Now, just to be careful, I don't think it's really needed here, but it might be. Um, we clip the thing to no bigger than 2047 and no smaller than negative 2047. Then we store that into the ring buffer. So analog out that we just assembled from the current analog in and the older values, that combined value we store into the ring buffer at the current tap. That's important to create the echoing effect that you'll hear. If we run off the top, then we decrement the current tap value index by the buffer size to bring us back down to zero. I guess we could have just wrote current tap equals zero here. So finally, with the new output value uh, assembled and recorded into the current tap location, we need to write that value out to the DAC. Before we do that, though, we recognize that the DAC takes numbers from 0 to 4095. And so we need to uh, add 2048. Remember, we had subtracted 2048 from our values before to make them bipolar. So now we're making them uh, unipolar, and we add 2048. Finally, here is the analog write function to the DAC 0 port of the value that we have now made unipolar. Same value, just uh, added 2048 to it. Finally, down here is some debug code so that we can look to see how often we go through 40,000 samples and print a line out on the screen on the serial monitor every time we go through that so that we can see how fast we're sampling. And then it goes to the next sample. So let's take a listen. So here's the reverb program running. Here's the microphone. I'll pull the microphone up and talk into it and we'll be able to hear what it sounds like. What it sounds like. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? You. You. Let's get some feedback. One of the nice things about programming, of course, is that it's very easy to make changes and experiment. So what we're going to do next is we're going to change this code. We're going to change this code and see if we can make some different sounds. Uh, it's very easy to do that, the way the code is written. We're going to play with the tap points here and with the buffer size here. So first, let's change the buffer size to say 20,000 and see what the effect of that is. So we've changed the buffer size to 20,000. We did not update the comment because we're just going to be changing things a lot here. Um, so what that's going to do is make a ring buffer which is more than double the size of before and so the echo should last longer. Let's do a quick compile of this program. You can see how the Arduino Due compiles same buttons as you normally use up here, but the transcript is a little different down here at the bottom. It takes a little longer to program it. So there it goes. It goes through that kind of a transcript twice, and now it has the new code in it. So let's take a listen. Hello. 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 
that is a very discreet reverb. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi.